yes. I have to say yes, because if I don't say yes, no one would say yes. <laughs> Diabetes is the fastest growing disease worldwide, with an estimated 325 million patients in 2025. Fortunately, there have been major advances in diabetes research over the past decade. During this period, Lund University Diabetes Center has grown into one of the largest centers of diabetes research in the world, struggling for the ultimate goal to develop new strategies for treatment, prevention and cure of diabetes. I think the best is develops when the patient no longer can increase the insulin demands to compensate with the increased insulin needs imposed by the environment, obesity, insulin resistance. The situation is very similar to when a woman is pregnant. If she can increase her insulin secretion threefold, then she can maintain normal glucose tolerance, otherwise she become gestational diabetes or diabetes during pregnancy. So we need to find out how the pregnancy <laughs> increases insulin secretion to really stimulate the insulin producing beta cells to increase the insulin output. And there are several groups working here on that. You might be able to prevent development of type 1 in a person who is prone to develop it by using some kind of immune modulation or vaccines to cure diabetes or someone is on insulin injections or dependent upon them you really need to come up with a system that would replace the failing insulin producing glucose reading beta cells the dream is that you take a small biopsy from the skin to put in four different genes in that so you can get it reprogrammed it to become stem cells and then you can try to put in other genes to have them to develop into pancreatic cells. That actually has been possible. The problem is that they still only pancreatic cells. They don't make insulin, they cannot read glucose. But 10 years ago no one thought that the first step would be possible or <laughs> it was very far away. So one day it might happen. One of the really obstacles in diabetes research has been the access to the key tissue for research pancreas since you do not develop diabetes without having a problem with the pancreas. The human tissue lab works like a bank. You put in something you get out. Everyone here has access to all information in there. So when we get islets, they are characterized, measured insulin secretion, but it's also performed a lot of genetic studies, exome sequencing, RNA sequencing, chip sequencing, a lot of what we call omics, that then researcher can go into the bank and get access to the information and use them for their research without that everyone has to reinvent the wheel. So this is really an infrastructure. I think that diabetes is much more complicated than the current subdivision into type 1 and type 2. So we hope that this genetic and biomarker driven classification will aid in that, but also help to identify individuals who respond to certain treatment, be more prone to develop certain complications. So by now we have more than 7,000 in the registry and we plan when we exceed 10,000 Scandinavians to try to do the first reclassification of diabetes which would go beyond the current classification into type 1, type 2 and the one you call LAD or latent autoimmune diabetes in adults. Why I said Scandinavians is that we also need to redo that in different ethnic groups because diabetes is so diverse and especially in Skåne where we now have about 20-25% of immigrants we need to do that. 
Then we hope Anlis would continue his research project until, I mean, the clinic would take over and it then will, will be an aid in a better classification, a better diagnostic tool to create a better personalized medicine. That can be within five years. One can say that invention is a way to turn money into new ideas and innovation then is turning new ideas into money. So it's really about commercialization of, uh, of your uh, inventions. And for LUDC that means that uh, we want to uh, develop the innovation potential based on the fantastic research that's being done in this centre so that that research will reach our patients in the form of better therapies or better diagnostics but somehow help the lives of the many diabetes uh, patients out there. And to do that, uh, we need to collaborate, among others, with the industry who has a lot of competence in developing new uh, therapies. So our role here in the uh, Innovation Office is to facilitate that dialogue between the industry and the scientists to identify some projects where we can work together and that have a commercial potential application so that the knowledge we have here is transformed into new, uh, new therapies.